pocket party. And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter and... The one and only, John DeResta. That's right. The one and only... Brother of Jimmy DeResta. Shout out to Jimmy. Thank you for all your help and retweets and sharing these links. Jimmy DeResta has a show yeah. on Netflix. And uh, I'm in my kitchen with, uh, what's your name again? Richard Chasler. Darren Carter, the party starter. <laughs> By the way, Richard just did my show and he, he changed his name. Now it's Rich Chasler. So shout out to Rich Chasler. Oh, really? Yeah. He used to be Richard. Yeah, but it, you know, he wants to, you know, you know, when you're a kid, he was Richie, then he was Richard, and now, wow. he's, now he's rich. Have you ever gone to that? Have you ever gone uh, to a no, change? No, but I will or? tell you, it's funny you ask. I will tell you this. My name is John DeResta, J O H N. Uh, there's about 10 or 12 John DeRestas in the world. Um, but. Uh, there's only about five or seven people in my whole life, in my 57 years, that call me Johnny. And I know exactly who they are. It's very, very unusual the way the mind works. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and they adopted that on their own. Oh. Well, Johnny. You, you mean it's a kind of person that would say it? Saying, no, no. I'm just saying like a, it's, yeah. it's this cousin. This oh, per, in other yeah, words, yeah, yeah. it's not a type of person. Yeah. I will tell you this that no one will tell you. Yeah. When I'm doing business via the internet with a woodworking customer, yeah. when they send their phone number and there's no spaces, it's just nine or 12 numbers all mushed together. It's like 323-677-500, like that. They wind up being the most difficult oh, clients. Because it is that yeah. the psychology. They didn't take the time to be like, dash. And guess what? I told this to my brother Jimmy, who's more famous than me, and he's better Shout woodworker. Shout out to Jimmy again. <laughs> and guess what he said? Yeah. He noticed that too. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. It's all those little things that make, you know, the 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 breakdown of society, <laughs> which we can say now that Elon Musk is in. No, I don't know. I'll been, tell you what. Yeah. I, I mean, I had to spend two or $300 today, and it hurt. Yeah. Just in general, you know, you just, if you think about it, you know, tomorrow I got to spend, you know, for my woodworking business, and I got to pay a helper. But if I woke up today and spent $44 billion on a website. <laughs> He's going to make that money back, though. And it's I also. I don't know how any of that works. That's a lot of money, huh? That's a lot that's of. That's not $44 million. I know. It's... That's. Is it, if I'm not. Is it 999 million times 40? I'll just say yes. You guys leave a comment below. I have no idea. I'm not good at that. I was thinking, well, more. Or is it 100 yeah. million times 40? I don't know. Or is it 999 million equals 1 billion? Something like that. You're a mathematician, aren't you? When no. you deal with wood? Oh, oh. No, no. I am. Watch this. Yeah. This is something else uh, your audience won't know. Uh, there's only one type of person that when they die, their brain weighs more than the other people because of how much they use it chess players, jugglers. Wow. But what I do find is, yeah. to answer your question, good with numbers, the more I do woodworking, the better my stand-up gets because of piecing mm. things together. It's mm. weird. And here's another thing I learned. Almost every heavy metal song or hard rock song, at least, that you love or I love, I mean, even ballads, yeah. other than ACDC, Back in Black, that whole album was written yeah. like this. Yeah. It yeah. came out of them like the devil. Yeah. Almost all these big famous songs are pieced together. Like now we're so used to the oh. way they go from beginning to end. Yeah. But similar to like this table would be pieced together. I don't start mm. off with, you know, this big uniformed plan. Yeah. I look around the workshop and I go, all right, these four pieces will be a leg. So what do you mean a song is pieced together? Like they, like they literally the beginning, the middle, the yeah. end, the rhythm, the the, the oh, words. Or maybe they like, they're like, oh, because I've heard like Weezer talk about that where they're like they they like there'll be a, a part of a song that they thought of eight years ago. They're like, right, oh, that's that what be, I'm getting at. No, nothing in. was written oh. as a masterpiece. Wow. You know what I mean? I'm, Even our stand up is like that. That's what I mean. Yeah. But but A, the more we do it, we piece it together better. Yeah. Yep. But I have an advantage of you know, having to put these things together every day. Yeah. I was thinking about this when I was a kid. By the way, you made this table? Of I course. did. I this made this table. And this is reclaimed wood from uh, San Luis Obispo. Wow. Train, train station. station. I could just tell by touching it. Yeah. And I think you also said it on a previous podcast. But listen, <laughs> I want to ask you, and here's, this is interesting. If you guys, table talk. Now listen, um, 
this is like the perfect height. Like my legs fit under here. They're not like squeezed under there. Right. If the your chair, thighs squeeze, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And you told me that there's like a measurement, right? Like every like a, every table yeah. on every human being yes wants to sit at a table that's twenty nine to thirty high, <laughs> and wow. every chair is seventeen and a half to eighteen. Wow. That's the ratio. And you could spot a new woodworker or someone that learned while they were in prison. Mm-hmm. You know, they haven't been doing it their whole life. Yeah. Because the table will be higher, high. lower. The seat will be higher or lower. And here's something that no one will ever tell you. When you go to design a table in an empty apartment or an empty house, and you take out the tape measure and you go to 30 high, yeah, 100% of people go, that's too low. I want my table 34. Mm. And I go, no, you don't. Wow. You want it at 30. And they're looking at the tape measure, and it looks like it's right off the ground yeah. at 30. And they go, dude, I mean, I've, uh, like I've had all, <laughs> and I make the people the table 34, and guess what happens? What happened? They go, it's too high. I, what do you, yeah. Oh, so the, the, I'm the, saying the number 30 yeah. looks extremely short. When you're on standing its own. and you see it. Does the 30, is that the top of the table to or the, the top? Or the, where the legs work would... to the top. Oh. To the top. And you need about 25 and a half for your legs to clear so you're, uh, yeah. So this part doesn't rub. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're tall or, or well, short. It, I mean, generally. You'd be like surprised that, yeah. um, like, if I sometimes I'll make something for a guy that's six foot six, yeah. like a basketball player, and he'll still just want 18 and 30 because he's used to that. Oh, or we could make it 20 and 20, 32. Like, we mm. can raise everything up because he's big. Wow. And. Uh, I've had to even have people sit on three, you know, phone books. Like another work it out. Mm. And then when you go high, you know how you sit at a high table? Yeah. The ratio is from here to the seat is 12 inches. Wow. So if somebody wants a 36-inch high table, yeah, we make the seat 36 minus 12. Yeah, gotcha. So there you go. There's your math. <laughs> See? There's your billion-dollar math. <laughs> two hey. colleges I failed out of, two. What were they? New Paltz, upstate New York. I was on five hits of acid, and I pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the oh, night in the winter. No. So you had 250 Grateful Dead no. heads yeah. all in their robes out in the cold. Oh, gosh. So you know what? You were one of those guys that you didn't channel your funny yet, right? You were just out in the wild, like, this will be funny. <laughs> no, you know, I was funny, but I was, I was, but you know what I mean? I like, was on a hallucinogenic. Yeah, it's a lot more when a person has direction <laughs> with their life. It's no, like, and, and then I was... Yeah. I failed out of Nassau Community College. Ooh. Don't want to drop names, but Andres Fernandez went there. Oh, yeah. Owner of the Ventura Rock Comedy Club. Oh, yeah. Chris Rock. The guy that got Eddie in Eddie the- Murphy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Billy Crystal and John Doressa. We all went to Nassau marvelous. Community. Yeah. And um, two police academies. I went to and graduated. NYPD. Wow. You didn't flunk those. You did good in those. Yeah. NYPD and then... <laughs> Transit Police Academy. I, I got a question about... Uh, I'm not gay. You, no, no, a different, a different kind of question. about the. Uh, so now we're talking Elon Musk, you know, 40, I think it's 44 billion. I, maybe I'm off by a billion or two. Um, think about it. Kids now growing up, that's going to be the name that they think of for the rich person. Who was the, the rich person when you were growing up? Oh, what a question. Um, you know, I, from a very little kid, I was enamored, and I would read the National Enquirer. And not for the gossip, for, but there was always the story of the Mexican fisherman who was out on the sea for 65 days with no food, and yeah. he would kill penguins and eat yeah. them. I love that kind of stuff. And I always loved those stories. And, and if you remember, I'm, you know, I'm 57 years young, so I'm pretty sure there were stories back then about that old guy that grew the long fingernails. Yeah, yeah, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes was the rich guy, you know what I mean, when I was a little yeah. kid. I was thinking Howard Hughes or like... Getty. Or, or Getty. Or, and there was a hostage situation with oh, Getty. Oh, 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 no, no, was it or was it... No, it was... um. Um, Hurst, William Hurst. Oh, some, Pat- John. Well, John. I always thought John Paul Getty had a son oh, or a grandson. Maybe I know Patty was, Hurst. Remember Patty, Patty Hurst? Hurst? Yeah, there was the Patty Hurst situation. Patty Hurst uh, suffered from Stockholm syndrome, mm. like many husbands. <laughs> 
They, tell, tell our they audience sympathize what, what, yeah. with their captor. <laughs> you got to use this. <laughs> Write it down. They oh. sympathize with their captor. This is how. This is the kind of comic he is. You're very, doing very well. You're writing on the back of your pay stubs from uh, the sack, the screen actors I am. guild, dude. I told you I'm crazy. I'm a. I, I save envelopes. Yeah. And or like the other half of the bill. Yeah. To write jokes on. I look. You could look right there on my couch. Wow. Because I, I, you, you might a, even have one. He handed me a piece of paper to write on, and I couldn't help but notice the, uh, what it says. It it's says a screen, SAG? Screen Actors Guild. Residual. Let's see what it paid. I know. I already looked. Oh, you, but uh, is it okay? Ooh, <laughs> this is a meat and potatoes. Meat. How, to lose in, how to Lose a Guy in 10 Days with yeah. Matthew McConaughey, Oscar winner. Yeah. Where uh, he got on my nerves one day, and I said we had a little bit of an argument in Staten Island on the mm. set. You and who? Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Wow. I wanted his autograph, and he said, "Dude, I'm in the middle of my work day, you, and you're my you're my co cast member, and you're gonna you're gonna do an amateur move." And I went, "All right, all right, all right." <laughs> you know what he said? All right, all, all right, right, all right, dude. I made that up. That's cool. And it's for two hundred and fifty three dollars. So, how to lose a guy in ten days was made twenty in two thousand four. So this is eighteen years ago. And I, I'm p- getting paid two fifty three. Wow, not bad. And By the way, you get to guys, write your stale jokes on the back. I get to write my little podcast. But guys, I am not making that kind of money, so I will do it. By the way, if you guys want to help support the podcast and buy, let's say, a cup of coffee, hit that Venmo at Darren Carter Comic on Venmo. Or go to DarrenCarter.com, PayPal. It helps a lot. Also, the Cash App. Dollar sign, Darren Carter Comic on the Cash App. And um, Thank you. Uh, just to polish off that other story, Patty Hearst's defense yeah. for robbing banks while holding an Uzi wow. was she suffered from a mental illness called Stockholm, Stockholm. Syndrome. Wow. And that probably got into the lexicon of America. I was like, what the heck is a Stockholm Syndrome? And then they- Now it's 80% of married men that go, yes, honey. Yes, okay. I'll edge the lawn. I'll go yeah. buy junk from the computer for you. <laughs> I was thinking the rich people, there's that, and there's also... Uh, I would have said, as a kid, I probably would have said Thurston Howell from Gilligan's Island. Like, it was almost nah, like Nah, well, I could see through that. Yes. I mean, I knew well, it was a TV well, show. Well, I knew it was a TV show, but that would have been my reference, though. I would have been like, you know, or, or uh, you know, uh, what was the Donald Duck one where they're rich? Like, the rich Donald Duck's uncle? The Jeffersons? No, Donald Duck. The wow, wow, Like, Uncle Moneybags. Or oh, what? I don't remember it. Donald Duck? You don't remember that one? I remember Donald Duck. I didn't know if his rich uncle doesn't doesn't bring a memory. Hold on. Let me look it up real quick. I'm, I'm more with I was exit, more, I was more exit with the, stage left. Exit stage left, even. Who was the rich uncle? Donald Duck's rich uncle, even. Murgatroyd. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Exit stage left. Duck Family Dynasty? Mm. No. Uh, oh, Uncle Scrooge. It was Uncle Scrooge. Remember that? Donald Duck, born in... Or, dude, I don't know Donald Duck had a birthday. Yeah, look at that. Donald Duck, born March 13th, 1913. The son of Quackmore and Hortense Duck. He's the, me- <laughs> the nephew of Scrooge McDuck, the older brother of Della Duck, and the uncle of oh, her sons, along. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Somebody had some extra time on their hands. Scrooge McDuck, fandom. There's a whole... F- look at this guy. He's so rich. Look, if you guys can see on camera, there's Scrooge... McDuck, but you know what Scrooge McDuck looks like. We don't have to go there, but anyways, they, uh, but yeah, so I would have said like a Thurston Howell or, or then, uh, recently in recent times, the rich people were, um, that guy that lives in Nebraska, Warren Buffett. Oh, okay. Warren yeah, I don't Buffett. know much about him. And then, um, I play tennis with him on Sundays. Um, then, <laughs> uh, the guy that owns Fox News is rich. Oh, yeah. What's his name? I don't know. Murdoch something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Richard Murdoch. I'm not supposed to know about Fox News. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, People n- will second guess me. I know. That's funny. Do tell, you, them, tell them the story. Tell them the story about Long Island, about the table. Yeah, the one okay, you told me so I sell, yeah. I sell this artwork at a flea market in Hollywood, or West Hollywood, which is pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty left. And uh, I had a customer yesterday, and we she was very interested in the table, and we got talking, and... And I said, she said, where's the accent from? I said, Long Island. And I said, a lot of famous people from Long Island. Howard Stern. Uh, Howard Stern. Um, uh, Kevin James is Long Island. And uh, Mariah Carey, Eddie Murphy, uh, Rodney Dangerfield. There's a lot of them. A lot of Long Islanders. I said, does Sean Hannity's from Long Island? No, she got specific, right? Didn't she say a town? Oh, no. She said, what yeah. town are you from? I said, I'm from Rockville. Uh, I said, I'm from Woodmere. Mm. And she goes, oh, my friend just texted me. She's from rockville center have you ever heard of rockville center and i said have i heard of it 
I used to carry packages there when we were kids. You carry packages to the yeah. ladies' cars and you get tips. Oh, cool. In Rockville Center. Then I went on a date with my wife to see Colors, the movie where Sean Penn plays a rookie cop. Colors. 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 Remember the rap song? Yeah, Colors. Yeah, it was great. The whole movie. Yeah. It was in Rockville Center. And then I just, as a matter of fact, said Sean Hannity is from Rockville Center. <laughs> And she was a little bit like, and we hadn't exchanged, we hadn't closed the deal yet. Yeah. And she said, Sean Hannity, do you watch him every night? <laughs> and went right to that. Wow. Yeah. And I said, uh, die. I want to close the sale. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch Fox. I don't have cables. <laughs> You're like, it's just something I heard once. I just, yeah. And no, I was just referencing where he's from. Yeah. That's all I was doing with Oh, yeah, see, everything is so political. You can't even mention. I remember another time you said that uh, you, you mentioned Sean Hannity's name somewhere else. And then, oh, that, remember that the was, lady, she had her hand on the mm, table. No, and, we yeah, carried yeah. a table into her nice house <laughs> yeah, tell us that story. in Hollywood. Yeah. Custom table. She was looking forward to it for months. <coughs> Me and my son were carrying it in, and we had just happened to be driving there with Sean Hannity on. Yeah. And she goes, oh, my God, you guys are so, this is such a nice, <laughs> oh, my, this is reclaimed wood. This is exactly what I ordered. Yeah. And and you guys, you guys got mad skills. And I said, yeah, all we do, just to make conversation, all we do is listen to heavy metal and listen to Hannity. And she went. <laughs> you said she touched it like it was 105 she, degrees. She like, just, ah! her hand jumped off. <laughs> like it was electric or something. Like Sean Hannity was in her table. <laughs> His spirit. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so it happens. So that's why I'm apolitical. Yeah. All I know, and I hope this doesn't get me canceled, I am completely unpolitical. But I'll tell you what, when I go to put a half a tank of gas in my pickup truck and a half tank is 95 bucks, I think, <laughs> what's, mashed, we'll leave, what's yeah. mashed potato brains up to? And we'll leave it at that. That's right, folks. Uh, <laughs> all right. My next question. And we, he means that Putin price hike. Okay, folks, we're going to move on with it. No, I'm just joking. We, I, 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 same thing, man. I'm not political at all. But it's so funny how things, you could say something, and then all of a sudden that becomes the, Well, what, you know, what about this? This is not political. Is the gas watered down now? Now even a half tank of gas runs out for me in, in, in a, a day. I don't know. I you know, know what I mean? A half yeah. tank seemed to last a week. Now it's <laughs> 80 or $90 for a half tank. My little trick is I, I try to get gas at the halfway mark now, so I don't feel so bad. Like I, don't, I used to let it get empty, and then you know, back in college, I let it, the light come on. Oh, I still got 25 more miles. Now I'm just like, ooh, halfway mark? Might as well do that. I feel Watch better this. about myself. This is a true story. Tom Snyder, who interviewed 20,000 people. You know Tom Snyder. Yeah, he's great. I love he Tom Snyder. He interviewed 20,000 people. And his three favorite guests ever were Jeffrey Tubin, the lawyer from CNN, yep. John Lennon of the Beatles, and John DeResta. Wow. And his favorite joke ever, he said, how broke have you been with the wife and three little kids as a New York City cop? I said, well, whenever I use the van, the minivan, or my wife uses it, we have to come in the house and report <laughs> whether it's on E, mm -hmm. high E, <laughs> or low E. Oh. And he, Tom Snyder was completely amazed that a cop, someone that's a working man, would know what even it means to be on low E. You know no, what I mean? He no, couldn't know, even he I, couldn't even conceive. I it. know that's in your mind, and you won't forget it. But you should write that down because that's something that could be in your act. That's really good. You know, especially because it's relevant now. Gas now, prices. Now, now watch this. Know? I have another yeah. thing. Yeah. Now that I'm not broke anymore, and I have a little money every now and then, I'll fill my. I'll I'll, I'll just put the credit card in, and go inside and get some lottos You're, or an orange you, juice, and I don't care yeah. that it goes all the way. By the way, you are my Elon Musk. Just so you know. Thank you. Yeah. Don't buy my podcast. Don't buy it. You're a. Uh, so I go in, and, and I don't care that it fills up, Yeah. right? So now I get in, and you're so used to being a white trash savage that's broke that you drive for five minutes, and you look down, mm. and it's beyond full, and it's so never been there that you think you're overheating. You oh. step right on my joke with your cough no, button. No, I, I hit mute. I hit mute. <clears throat> go ahead. I guess I could start the whole thing over. So what was it again? <laughs> You think it's E, but you think you're overheating because you're, you're seeing the... Because you never see it all the way to the right. Oh, yeah. Your eyes just... It's not used to it. You think, ah, oh, oil, something blue. He's not political, but even his even his gas gauge is to the right. But you ain't... 
Tom Mash, Snyder. But, dude, Tom, I'm putting Tom. gas in, and it's just going up to 108, 130. Oh. And all I could think of is, what's mashed potato brains up to? you got to write that down, too, by the way. What? That you're not used to having a full tank of gas, so and every time now you see it, you think your car is overheating. Because I get it. I, when my wife fills up my car, I'm like, why is that needle? Oh, yeah. It's, Dude, uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's... That's funny. Here's another thing I came up with the gas station. Yeah. My life was really in turmoil a couple of times. Between three kids, uh, income, my wife, sickness, diabetes. You know what I mean? A, a, a couple of times, and I would say... I don't think I ever told anyone this. They were like, you know, what's it like to have a wife and three kids in Hollywood and no income, maybe no money or whatever the pro- or health problems? And I said, did you ever drive into the gas station and you hit the three, the yeah. three sewer tops that are in a row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. go, what the fuck? What, yeah. what the? Yeah. What? Now yeah. imagine yeah. that happening for 16 months nonstop. Oh. That's and you only do yeah. it once a year, and you can't control it. And you're like, I'm out of control. Hey. <laughs> but imagine that twenty four seven. Wow. But now your kids are older, so that's good. No, no, no. Everything's yeah, yeah. good now. It's all good. It's all good. But it's I'm saying good. that gas station triple hump. Yeah. It's in the gas station humor. It is. I remember. I remember my first vehicle was a motorcycle. It was a Suzuki one eighty five. It was barely street legal. Like you could. Because it had the rear view mirrors. That's what made it street legal. And it was in Fresno. And I basically drove in a triangle from my grandparents' house to my apartment to the community college. And that's where the radio station was I worked at. Right. Right, right near the college. And I would fill up for 75 cents. And that would last a week, dude. It would last a week. 75 cents in that little gas tank inside the motorcycle. Well, the lowest I remember is, um, at least in L.A., I bought a Mustang convertible. Leased it. Mm. When I first moved to L.A., I had a sitcom. I was in the movies, mm. Sandra Bullock, Robert De Niro, Tonight Show, Jay Leno, Couch, not even a stand-up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Tom yeah, Snyder yeah. Yeah. telling him about my E and my low E. And I filled up my Mustang convertible, Ford, and it was $12.50. Wow. That's, that's what I remember. Wow. And I remember cigarettes being $0.55 cents a pack. Mm. On, in a neon sign in that Long was, Island. That was in New York, huh? Yeah. yeah. And a slice of pizza at Sabatino's was 35 cents in wow. neon. Wow. 35 cents Dude, I don't even neon. know. What could you buy for even like 50 cents? I don't know what you could buy now for 50 cents. Yeah. Candy bar, maybe? I don't even know. I don't know. Why would I buy a candy bar, though? I don't want candy. Yeah. No, yeah. I like candy. I mean, I do like candy, but I'm not going to buy it. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. The, I don't want to, you know. No, the, once a week, I got to break that. Dude, if I see milk duds, they're like crack cocaine. Really? Your thing is milk duds. Oh, dude, I can eat so many milk duds that it comes out the other end and it looks like an amoeba. <laughs> it didn't even break down. They just joined up. I was, for a while, I was eating this one candy. Have you guys heard of it? It's called like the Grand or something or or I forget what it was called. It was part pretzel, part chocolate, part... It was something really good, and I was getting it. It was delicious. I'd get it. A what you call it? No, it was something like that. But it was—I don't even know. It was like a newer one. What about a twenty thousand dollar bar? Those are awesome. Those are good. I used to like Butterfingers. But Babe I think, Ruth. I, I think I outgrew it. No, I don't really like Babe Ruth. I like when it comes to what about how, Milky. How about this? Snickers. This is a funny question. Yeah. S- Snickers can go S their mom's D. <laughs> you don't like Snickers? Well, I have to. I, I'll eat yeah. a Snickers if I have to. But yeah. guess what? You know the way I always ask Ozzy or Dio in Black Sabbath? Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Ozzy yeah. or Dio? Ozzy or Dio? Uh, I'm going to say Ozzy, but then lately I've been hearing Dio, and I'm like, this guy's pretty good too, but I mostly would say Ozzy. Okay. You're with 70 to 80%. Yeah. So now, this is the question. This is a yeah. funny question. This is Ozzy or Dio, and then the next question is? Yeah. Three Musketeers or Milky Way? Mm, Come on. Three Musketeers. I can go either way. Butterfingers or Snickers? <laughs> Glazed donut or t- chocolate donut? Uh, I, when I eat a donut, it's got to have white vanilla frosting with rainbow sprinkles. Everything else can go S its mom's D. You know, the, you know uh, um, Jack LaLanne, big health. I do. I was a member. Jack LaLanne said the healthiest part of the donut is the whole. Whoa. Like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Be hacky. <laughs> Here's a, here, let's pour one out to your mom. <laughs> yeah. All right, pretty mama. All right, here we go. Ready? This is a good one. Okay, Carl's Jr. 
or Hardee's? Trick question. No, watch Hey-o. this. I grew up thinking. I yeah. grew up. Yeah. I, I grew up, and fast food was a treat. That was like a Friday night. That's yeah. bringing home McDonald's, and yeah. now that you know, I'm a single. You know, I'm a single dad, so yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. and I don't cook for myself. And I'm running around comedy woodworking, comedy lumberyard, comedy customer. So I go through a lot of drive-throughs, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick yeah. of fast food. Why don't we invent? Right. A drive through pizza parlor that you can get two slices and a Diet Coke. Why don't they have that? They don't have that, huh? They don't have. Let's go to Shark Tank. They don't have a drive through pizza. I just want two slices of pizza. Yeah. I'm sick of hand. Watch this. In and out, I go once a year, and I think the next day I'm going to be pregnant. Mm. And yeah. while I'm eating, I'm like, this sucks like every other fast food. <laughs> it's good if you, but here's the thing the way you make it good is you get like, you start adding patties to it. Like, let me get the triple, triple. Let what, the, whatever it is, yeah. it's, the, the line doesn't justify no, you're the means. Right. I know. Ooh. The line. I remember the first time I was at In-N-Out Burger and they asked me that question. Sir, will you be eating this in your car? Do you remember that? No, I don't. Oh, dude, they'll ask you that. Will Why? You, well, because they want to give you the box. They want to give you a box instead of like a piece of paper or a bag. Or, okay. they, they know you're going to eat it. So they, But... When they go, sir, will you be eating that in your car? I was like, damn, I'm getting fat shamed. <laughs> like, I thought they were like, yeah, the guy in the white Honda has zero self-control. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't think that. But I will watch. This is what I do like about. What are we talking about? Uh, in and out Burger. In-N-Out. This yeah. is what I like about in and out Every now and then on the way home from a gig, usually coming from Ventura. Oh, yeah. There's the one right before you get go through Camarillo. Yep. It's right on the right. Oxnard area. Yeah, and the line is is small. Yeah. I think you can even go inside, and usually you're next. You're not even, you know what I mean? Yep. And um, it's a treat. The ride home from a gig, it's a treat. But if I get it just in my own neighborhood, it's just, Yeah. you know what I like yeah. a lot? I go to Tom's, corner of Cahuenga and Burbank. I got to try that. It has a drive-thru, Ooh. has a good burger, has good oh, all kinds of stuff. Good burger, wow. And then good. I get rice and beans a lot. At Tom's? From Daniel's Tacos. Where's that at? Danielle's Tacos is on Cahuenga, north of Burbank. Wow. Danielle's Tacos. I get uh, yellow rice, refried beans, mm. orange aid with extra ice. Mm. You know the orange aid? Yeah. That's good stuff. I would skip it, but that's good stuff. I have had it, though. I like it. It's tasty as a mofo. Yeah, I try to stay away from all that kind of... Oh, it's all you know, high in sugar. I mostly drink water and coffee. I got it. Okay, here, here I got my next one for you. Ready? Go ahead. This is going to be... Uh, we're going to talk... Regrettable tattoos. Ooh! Shout out to Daniel. <laughs> he starts looking at his own body. Shout out to Daniel. What's that thing you always say? This ain't they can't know the other one. Uh, I could back it I up. Back it up. Yeah, 1982. I back it up. Okay. Shout out to Daniel Wesley Allen. By the way, if you want to hear your voice on Pocket Party, the Pocket Party podcast. Go to my Instagram, DM me, and you can do a little voice recording. There's a little voice recorder thing right there. And uh, leave a question. So Daniel Wesley Allen left this message. Here we go. Oh, don't lose it. Here we go. Hey, Darren. Daniel here. I love the Pocket Party podcast, and I have a tattoo story, and it goes like this. Uh, One day, I met this girl that I had a very fat crush on with a group of friends at a bar. We were uh, talking, and during the conversation, tattoos were brought up. And um, I was like, oh, I was interested in this conversation because I was planning on getting a tattoo myself. And um, and then she also said that I do tattoos as well. So I uh, caved into the idea of having my tattoo done by the girl that I had a crush on. Uh, But... (laughs) She did a great job, and uh, if you are familiar with musical notes, which I think you are, I got a triplet eight-note uh, tattooed on my arm. Mm. Um, about a week later, she wanted to never see me again after that. <laughs> Dude, that was great. Thank you so much, Daniel yeah. Wesley Thank you, Daniel. Allen. Now, watch this. I'll tell you how I thought that yeah. story was going to go. That yeah. He only knew her a week. He got her name, mm. and then... Um, then she, yeah, to me, that would have been a juicier story. Yeah. And if you're asking me, I have about probably eight or nine tattoos and I absolutely 1000% do not regret any of them. That's good. At at all. And I'll tell you why. This might be a little bit weird. To me, their street cred 
when I see a, like a guy in a metal band, which, or, or, or uh, anyone I see that's covered in tattoos, I instantly think that they just have more balls. They've been around more. Even if they're green and faded, you know that this person has lived a life or mm. some type of life mm. or, or tried to. So to me, even you know, from whatever I have, you know, from a distance, it's street cred. You know, and each one kind of meant something at the time. Yeah. And mine are all worked into my stand-up act. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so mine, I, I'm one of the only people I know that have kind of... Uh, also, you know who has a few tattoos that they worked into their funny uh, banter? Who? Adrian Vita. Once again, who? Who's that? Um, uh, <laughs> I think she uh, she's on Instagram. She's a woodworker. Oh, and, oh and, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 Yo yeah. Adrian. I'm pretty sure she's got a couple of tattoos. I know that, her as something else. I know her as the uh, farmer. Yeah, like a, or a homestead, Hickory Homestead. Homestead, Hickory, Hickory Homestead. Uh, Shout homestead, out to Hickory. Yo <laughs> I thought it was a comic you were saying. But yeah. yeah, no, no, but I'm saying she's got a few that like, Have you she's ever... so witty that, that they were like, boom, boom, boom with the tattoos. Oh. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Watch yeah. Watch this. A joke, the beginning of a joke has to be true. For it to work, right? David yeah. Letterman will say, it was so hot out today in New York because it was hot. Yeah. And then he does the twist. Right. Fra right? Fraser Smith does that. Right. Yeah. Fra you guys are great. Yeah, yeah. Thank when you. I love that. I watch yeah. it every day. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, right. You know the setup's got to be true. So watch this. Here's a Chinese symbol. Yes. Guess what the setup is? I got a it's Chinese. It's the tattoo. Oh, I see. It's real. Oh, It yeah, can't yeah, be yeah. faked. You're like, Here's hey, my check out my tattoo. You know what it means? The ta tell, tell us a joke. So what is that tattoo of the Chinese symbol? What does it mean? Okay, well, like when I went at 40 years old, or? right, the, I, I, the guy said, the, this is, he was Mexican. He said, this is the one you should get. Yeah. He talked me into this. Mm -hmm. And he, I said, what is it? You know, out of all the Chinese symbols, what does it mean? And he was a Mexican guy right here on Laurel Canyon. He goes, uh, it means I am everything and I am nothing. Ooh. Right? Same to deep. And I, I like smoked a little medical marijuana. Yep. I'm everything. Well, I'm a comedian. I'm tan. I have white teeth. I've been in the movies. I'm everything. And then what? I'm nothing. I'm a piece of shit from Long Island with a fake tan and fake white teeth. buck teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Right? So it right. means that so I'm all proud. Hour later, I just like this, reach for the menu at Chinese Delight. The way to go, why you got that? I said, I am everything and I am nothing. It's an hour old. Look at it. I'm crazy. Yeah. He goes, that don't mean that. That's number 65, beef and broccoli. <laughs> right? <laughs> then here's my three kids' names, Matthew, You're, Sabrina, and Matthew. Shannon. Yep. And in the tattoo, Shannon is spelled wrong. Are you well, serious? Yeah, I don't want N, oh two Oh, my ends. gosh. How am I supposed to know? That's hilarious. I have my own problems. <laughs> Right? Oh, wow. But I'm getting at yeah, You know, here's yeah, yeah. Fran. I left a little space for letter K in case I switch teams. Frank. <laughs> well, she transitions. Oh, gosh. She could transition. Yeah. And change her name to Frank. <laughs> My point being yeah. that, uh, you know, to me, there's street cred. But uh, two people do get tattoos removed. And sometimes they do get those jokes, too, right? Like the uh, the one of like a, like a rooster, like, Below, like, like below their, like above their ankles, so they could be like, my my cock is below my knee or something. Oh like yeah, that. there's. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I yeah. met a girl. Yeah. And I don't even want to say it because I know this is a clean show. Yeah. And can, I could do it. Can now. you say it clean? I yeah, I could say it. So you see this? This is what? What does that look like? Uh, here? A panther. I right. Think. What color is the? Panther? A black panther with red right. ears. That looks really cool, by the way. The red ears, all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a black panther. Yeah. But a girl I know, a comedian, mm -hmm. got a huge one on her calf, right above her cankle, mm. and she couldn't wait to show everybody her favorite black p word. Oh, get it? But it's a black panther. Oh, she actually got a, a no, no. She got a black panther, but she oh, was oh, calling oh. it a p u s s y. Oh, okay, I got you. Oh, it the, was a bad yeah. twist on words. Oh, okay, yeah. I want to see my. Oh, that's yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's not, but I'm saying I could do that with this. Yeah, yeah, you could, but it's and like, then underneath it, it says O G Flid. So there's street cred. Original. I'm an old school Flid. gangster or original gangster. Yep. For me, I used to say I'm an orange ginger. OG, I'm an orange ginger. Yeah, old school gangster, F L I D, an F in Long Island D bag. 
<laughs> Dude, I'm the real hey, deal. I'm an effing Long Island d Have you ever heard that joke where the girl goes, I've got a tattoo of Thanksgiving on my left thigh. No. Christmas on my right thigh. Come visit me between the holidays. Oh, okay. No, no, no. But watch this. I do know this, and, and it's a similar rhythm of yeah. what took place in real life. Yeah. I became a New York City cop July 15th of 1986. You got that? You can write that down. Right. Say it again one more time. 7-15, yeah. 1986, I was sworn in to the New York City Transit Police. Yep. But for the two or three months before, they do a medical, a physical, a psych- psych- psychiatric test, right? So at, uh, when I went to the medical in Left Rock City, they wanted a, a, a blood sample, Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. I know this joke. Don't they do it! Don't do it! Oh god! Go ahead, go Don't ahead, go worry. Ahead. Be, Be hacky. hacky. Look, he doesn't even want to hear it. Oh god! All right, so everyone, hit me up on Instagram, and I'll tell you the joke. If you don't want me to oh, say it, I won't say it. Oh, come no. on, dude! Come it on, really dude! Happened. I heard this old man in an open mic say that when I first started. Okay, don't he got it from worry. me. All right, you know what? You get, we'll do it, but we got to do the song afterwards. <laughs> okay, so you had the doctor wanted to see. Well, the NYPD they yeah. wanted us. They they wanted a for me to get on the job. They wanted a a urine sample, a feces sample, and a semen sample. So I gave him my underwear. <laughs> Don't Don't worry, be be hacky. (laughs) Here's a little joke I I wrote. wrote. (laughs) Might like to say it note Note for note. note. Don't Don't worry, be be hacky. (laughs) (laughs) I'm probably not going to isolate that and make its own video. But yeah, the the great Scambini used to do that joke at the open mics. Wow. Yeah, he was like in his 80s and he was like... Can I tell you where I got it? Yeah, so hold on. So I'll admit to it. He'd be like, so I gave him my underwear. But for me... To become a civil servant, this setup yeah. is 50 times more rock solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for And sure. I get in a rhythm with my group of you yeah. know individuals, or some people would call them an audience. Yeah. I get into a rhythm of yeah. these f- real setups yeah. with these crazy twists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is one of them. I probably <laughs> fell for that the first time you heard, told me, you know? Well, do you know where I got it? But I'll be, I'll be honest, I'll give him his props. Yeah. I got it from uh, uh, Tim Conway Jr. Oh. On the radio. He's, a good, he's funny on there. Oh, he's way funny. Dude, to be out, watch this, to be out at night, yeah. going to a gig yeah. in California, tonight is 78 degrees, right? You know tonight's great weather. Yeah. And if I'm not listening to blaring, devil worship, heavy metal, that's... Dr- dr- do You know what I do now? I put my seat back. Mm. I put my seat back only about three inches, and yeah. I'm getting the back speakers, oh. and it's 50 times louder. Wow. Um, and if I'm not listening to that, I'm listening to Tim Conway. You guys know at home from yeah. Tim Conway Jr. and Tim Conway, Tim Conway, his son. He's great. He goes, uh, he, you know, that, that place called Supercuts. He calls it, or as I call it, Super Disappointments. <laughs> He's got a lot of funny stuff. Right. And his dad was on what show? Luce uh, No, um, Carol, Carol Burnett. Burnett. Carol Burnett. I got another question. A, a, a listener writes in. And uh, I told him that John DeRest is coming on. By the way, like I said, I'll say it one more time. Go to Instagram, DM, do a voice recording. Start out saying, love the Pocket Party podcast or been listening to the something about the Pocket Party podcast. That, that always helps. Kiss up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so somebody wrote, he wrote, this guy wrote in, but I want people to start recording so you can be part of the show. He asked me to ask you. Go ahead. If you know, since you were New York, since you really did work in the subways for 12 years, yeah, twelve years. Um, are there any underground worlds under there? Like, is there like a you know community? Oh, underground? 100%. I worked in the homeless outreach unit for the last seven years, and we had to go down in the tunnels and kick people out. So not only did I work in the tunnels for seven years, um, I'm in the fantastic documentary that I got to get up up and, and loaded. It's called Under New York, and they followed me, a New York City transit cop that worked mm. with the homeless outreach unit in the tunnels. They followed me for a year. And a homeless person that lived in the subway tunnel for a year wow. named Jerry, a black gentleman who lost his family to, I think, a fire. Mm-hmm. So he went, he became a drug addict that lived in the mm-hmm. tunnels. And you thought comedians were antisocial. People that live in the tunnel go down there because they've like, some of them, some of them just need to be warm and in a place. Yeah. But 90% of the people that live in the subway of New York in the tunnels are gone mentally. So I did that for seven years. They're probably not seeing a lot of sun. Huh? They're not, dude. 
You thought open mics were bad. Wow. No, what, that's what, a dumb joke. What about um? No, it's true though. It's, it is true. Open mics are bad. Um, what about in the summer? Is it hot under the in the oh, tunnel or is it it's cold? Disgusting. Or, it's no, hot. it's hot. It's, it's hot. hot. Wow. And there's two or three. Maybe four or five subway stations that are in the system that haven't been used in 50, 60, 70 years. That's what I was going to ask you about. Let's talk about that secret world. Yeah, like, like, and, and a yeah. lot of times we in the homeless outreach unit would be called to these stations because there'd be 10, 12, 15 people living there. That somehow got in there. Well, somehow they cockroached their way in. They're like, you know, they get through holes and, and gates. And then while they're in there, there's no public to say, hey, these there's homeless people here. They yeah. they set up a whole town. Wow. It's like the Salton Sea. Do you know about that town? No. Dude, you don't know about the Salton Sea? Is that here in, in California? In Palm Springs, there's a town on a dried up oh, lake. Oh, I've driven out there. There's a town on a dried up the, lake that the police won't go to. Wow. And there's no stores. There's no nothing. Wow. It's just like, you know, 250 hippies living in like a, almost like in a, a, in a Chernobyl-like wow. scene. Wow. I, I, is it yeah is, is what's the what's the black sea is that something different that's something different huh the black sea i think is uh, in russia i think you're right the salt i remember going to el centro the salt and sea yeah. dried up and it left this horrible smell yeah i drew i remember driving to el centro and on the way the way down i remember looking like i was like what's that over there and then i looked it up later and they said that there was supposed to be this whole it was going to be the next palm springs but it never happened and it, you're right it smells terrible and somehow it was salt water that dried up and it's it's and dead fish were there let's do a little uh, google search i'll do it as a uh, thunder what's his name again heavens to murgatroyd uh i have Mega- what's his name again uh snagglepuss yeah. salt and sea even yeah no it didn't come out Salton Sea. According to Green Matters, sadly, the Salton Sea also contains incredible amounts of contaminants. The mud is laced with toxic chemicals such as chromium, zinc, lead, and pesticides like DDT. Gross. Yeah. yeah it's toxic. It's no good. Oh, it's abandoned. Yeah, it, it's a whole town that's abandoned. A whole in resort. 1976, flooding from Hurricane Kathleen had the Salton Sea area completely underwater. Wow. Vacation homes were deserted, resort developments were halted, mid-construction, and RVs and boats were all left behind in the rotting city. Yeah. Wow, dude. It's like a, it's a, it's like a little North Hollywood. Yeah, it's like, yeah. there's one guy out there making tables. Yo. Oh. And his friend does a podcast with him. Zazing. <laughs> no, but I wonder if there's like certain tunnels that are like, like, I'm also my, uh, this guy that wrote in, he, uh, he said there's the secret tunnels, and he goes, and do you know anything about like the government like having a secret city under there? Like a I do government- not know about a government secret city. I do know that we've gone under, and I wish I took photos, we've gone under Gracie Mansion. Mm-hmm. So Gracie Mansion is where the mayor lives in New York, down by mm-hmm. 9-11. Yeah. And we've gone under Gracie Mansion, and there's these old wine cellars mm-hmm. that you, you from mm-hmm. the subway tunnel, you make a right, and you're in these, like, you know, like 40-foot ceilings that are red brick, and wow. they're arched. And there's nothing but just, like, fresh dirt. And you're underground. Wow. And they somehow, some way, like in the early 1900s, the mayors of New York, that's where they kept their wine. Wow. But now it's open, like, anyone, if you if you know how to get there, underground. Wow. So, I, and I'm the only human being on the face of this earth, out of 7 billion people, that played Caroline's as a headliner at 9 o'clock on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And at 10.30, was walking directly underneath Caroline's on a Broadway subway line looking for homeless people. I'm right under the comedy club that I was wow. just headlining, that people think I'm a star. But here I am in the, tra- in the subway tunnels, and this is how dangerous it is. Number one, your f- floor level. Have you ever stood next to a New York City subway train floor level? The thing is 12 or 15 feet high. No. It's not like when you get on the platform, yeah. it's only six feet high. Oh. It's this humongous animal. And your clothing can get caught. You're right on the train tracks. So when a train comes, you have to niche up. You know what that means? Put your back against the wall. Well, there's there's cutouts in the wall that you have to get into. Oh, jeez. And if you're on a turn, that train extends over the tracks, and it can catch your clothing. Wow. And you get sucked under and chopped into 50 pieces. No loose clothing. No loose clothing. I almost got hurt in my shop two days ago. When it ago. goes by, does it kind of create a vacuum where we're it kind does, of it, you a little it bit? Usually, right. It, it, usually, if it's on a turn, it's going slow. Mm. 
can the people see you? No, because you're below. Oh. You know, sometimes if you're up on a platform, like if you're in, you could be in a subway station that hasn't been open in 50 years, but the train just shoots past it. Mm. So they'll see six or seven transit cops dealing with a homeless clients. <laughs> wow. You as know, they speed by. You know, like in those other, I've seen videos online where people, uh, a lot of times in other countries like South America, somewhere the the kids will jump on top of a normal train and like- Skylarking. Yeah, surfing and it's, all that. It'll kill you in New York. Do they, it'll kill do you. They, do people try that in New York? Oh, I, I called in sick one night and I said to my partner, did I miss anything? And he said, dude, a kid stuck his head out the window <sighs> and hit the red, white, and blue light. No. And his whole face was mangled. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or they stay on the, they get on top of the train. Yeah. And it's outdoors. Wow. So they're riding. Thinking it's fun. They're thinking yeah, it's fun. I'm the crazy. wind, I'm yeah. holding on. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it goes into a tunnel. Oh. It's called oh. skylarking. And another one they do is you know how the doors shut? Now there's a there's a six inch platform. Yeah. So they jump, put their feet on, and hold on like this, and they're flat to the uh, train. Oh, oh, there's a six inch there's a platform six where the doors are. Wow. In other words, the doors shut, but yeah. there's six inches oh. that still stick out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they jump on that. They put their feet right, left. They hold on. Oh, like ballet style. Like ballet hand. style. Yeah, and they probably do it for TikTok and, and, and all And crap. then next yeah. thing you know, they're going in a tunnel and they get scraped off like a bug. Wow. But if they get views, it's worth it. Uh, yeah. You know about the story over here at Burbank? Right here at Burbank, one mile away. A this, daredevil. No. Tried to run in front of a train or run past it. Wow. Chopped him right in half. Google it up. Wow. Yeah, dude. I'm not going to Google that. I've been around the block twice. This ain't day camp even. And you know what we called the uh, homeless people when we found them what? over the radio? What? Called them clients. Oh, that's good. Right? Your client. You know what, though? Someone called me a client. I was at a, I think I was at Best Buy or something. They referred to me as a client. Well, for us over the police radio, yeah. you know, we would say, uh, be advised, this is a homeless outreach, uh, Shield 1623. <laughs> yeah. Officer DeResta, we're at 1084 Times Square. We have three clients. Uh, we're headed to uh, the uh, shelter up in Washington Heights. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds. I yeah. would uh, in that situation. I guess being a client would be nice. Well, because over the police radio, it would yeah. be politically incorrect to go. Uh, Central, be advised. It's uh, Officer DeResta, Shield One Six Two Three, Homeless Outreach Unit. We got three bums that stink like rotten onions. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of them's got a stool in his underwear's uh, oh. condition normal. We got a two-legged cockroach. Yeah, the two-legged cockroaches. Oh, He's got a uh, stool. What did you say? He had a stool. No, this is a true story. I, we picked up a couple of clients. Uh, I don't want any. Is it true? These true stories are kind of gross sometimes. Okay. All right, moving on. No, you can do. No, they can hit me up and get the private story. <laughs> yeah, get these private stories. <laughs> Adrian can hit me up. She'll get the private story. Uh, what's a private stool story? So I gave him my underwear. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Be no. Wait, what? Yes. We picked up a couple of clients, and this is in a van now. This is in a van with no barrier. So yeah. we're picking up these crazy homeless people, no barrier. Are they usually, yeah. Like in a church van. Yeah. And they sit in the last two or three rows, and we're driving the van, me and my partner. So we make comfort, and we're nice to the homeless people. You have to be nice to them to be in the unit. Yeah. You know, but it's plain clothes. You have a lot of freedom. It's a good gig if you don't mind dealing with homeless yeah. people. And if you're a people person, like myself, right? So we picked up a guy and we said, hey, dude, we got some food when you get out. You know, we got some bum bait. We got, uh, no, we have a nice <laughs> bologna sandwich, no condiment, no ketchup, no mayo, yeah. no mustard. Is that so it doesn't spoil? It's just, you know, they, they snap them open. They get it all over the van. Oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, messy. Yeah. Yeah. So in turn, the sandwich is drier than a mummy's scrotum. Mm. Write that down. Write that down. Drier than a mummy's scrotum. <laughs> drier than a <laughs> Yeah. So one night we picked up a client, and just to make conversation, I said, "Hey, I, you know, hey, dude, how you doing? What's your name? We got to write just the first name. My name's Jimmy." I said, "How you doing tonight?" He said, "Nah, not too good, officer." I said, "Why not, Jimmy?" He said, "I got a stool in the back of my underwear, the size of your leg." Oh. Yeah. Don't worry. worry. Be, be true hey, storyteller. True story. <laughs> I think it's time to get hacky. <laughs> that's it's like, not. Wow. No, I think it should be because that's so gross. It's that, borderline that, hacky. No, no, no. I, what I'm saying is hacky. Let's bring us up out of this. You know what? I think being hacky could be another thing, not just comedy related. Like, you know, because hacky kind of means it's pedestrian, like very general. Like everyone can get it, right? Right, like, right. I was it's easy. It's I was easy. thinking that even with life, man, like. 
like uh, with the way you dress or something. Like I was on the road and, and I noticed me and the two other comics were all both kind of wearing the same clothes. We both were wearing dark jeans and black t-shirts. And I'm like, dude, we all look like we have the same closet. Like this is very hacky. This is, but it, you know, it was kind of funny in a weird way that we're right. all like, this is. Well, watch this. I think I could sum it up. In other words, for me anyway, I like to make people happy and make people laugh. So the, if I have to take tables tonight, you saw the smiles on those girls' faces? Yeah. Do you think that when I left, they looked at each other and said, he's a hack? No. Not at all. You, made him you know laugh. what they said? He's funny. This guy's funny. He made yeah. this table. He kept us entertained. Tell, tell them about the Russian lady. She was a, uh, let me guess, how would you describe her again? Two dimes and a, a quarter? She was a deuce and a quarter. Deuce and a quarter, yeah. She probably weighed about 225, but was, you know, uh, Rubenesque, mm -hmm. Zoftic. Oh, big word. Yeah. Yes. Google it up. I did. I, heard, I heard, Yeah, I, I, I heard that word one time before. She was Rubenesque. She was getting it done. You know where I learned that? Where? On the movie Miss Congeniality, which today is April 25th, if you remember. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. Nice. When the girl was describing her perfect date. Mm. Miss New Hampshire. But on the set of Miss Congeniality, we're in a van. You know, the transport guys are all Texan. Yeah. You know, they're in Austin. And we're in the van in a red light. And a woman crosses at a red light. And she's Rubenesque. And, <laughs> yeah. But shapely like a mafo. You know what a mafo is? A mofo. I don't know. And, and you yeah. know, there might have been a comment or two. And, and here's this big Texas hillbilly. He goes, we call that a deuce and a quarter. I said, what does that mean? He said, 225 pounds, all shapely, right in the right spots. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. And then it, he said something much more dirty. Oh. Which we'll save. You guys can Instagram Can me. you say with with just the first initials of these words or no? He said he I absolutely like loves, um, you know, a certain part of a woman. And then said, it doesn't matter white, black, Hispanic, skinny, tall. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. He, you know what he was? What? He was a giver. <laughs> he was, right? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't judging anyone. <laughs> That's right. Dude, he was living his best life. Hell yeah. <laughs> living his best life. Now, I'm a little nervous. It says right error. I don't know what that oh, means. I no. don't know if it's skipping. Let's do it all again. No, it just happened right now at the 53-minute mark. So you guys just missed a little bit. If not, I think I might patch that in. But uh, uh, John, we're going to wrap this up because okay. I don't know what's happening with this. But uh Thank you so much yeah, for doing dude. the podcast. We're having a good time. Let's give a shout out to Adrian. Yes. We love you guys. Tell us what you like. Tell us what, you, uh, what you're thinking of. And if you want to be a part of the show, Instagram, leave a voicemail on my Instagram inside the DM, and we, we, might, we might choose yours, okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. We out. Thank you. Everybody listen to Darren Carter We all know he's the party starter So if you want to listen to a podcast for free Then listen to The Pocket Party